everybody. How are you this evening? Fantastic. Fantastic. One of my favourite words, Mr. Fantastic Fox. Um, so, thank you for inviting me. It's lovely to be here. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, who believes they're intuitive? Yeah? Lots of people in the room. Who listens to their intuition? Sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes? Yeah, sometimes? Um, I've always believed that I've, I've been really intuitive. And like yourselves, there's been a lot of time when I haven't listened to my intuition. Going back many, many moons ago, I used to travel from Kingston to um, Bond Street on the trains every day. I used to work in central London. And there would be many occasions where I would be on the overground, I'd have to get off at Vauxhall, and I'd be reading my book, and I would get this, like, this voice that would say, don't get off at Vauxhall, go to Waterloo. And more often than not, I would ignore it. I'd get off the train at Vauxhall, I'd go down the stairs to the tube line, to the Victoria line, and guess what would happen? There'd be a problem on the Victoria line. I'd have to go back all the way up the stairs, wait for the train, and go all the way to Waterloo. Happened many, many times. Um, another occasion, I mean lots and lots of occasions, but a particular occasion that, that was, was very difficult to deal with was um, when I was living in South Africa. Um, I was heavily pregnant at the time. And um, in the morning I got this, 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 this thought, I've got to ring my friend Sue. Got to ring my Sue, friend Sue. And you know, busy, heavily pregnant, got a son to take to school, went off to school, kept thinking, no, I'll ring her later, ring her later. Later that day, I got a phone call to say that she had committed suicide that morning. Whether I, I knew that in my heart, that something was wrong, um, I don't think that I could have changed what happened, but I ignored my intuition. I didn't listen to it. Roll on, roll on many years earlier, uh, four, years, four years ago, I knew my intuition was telling me my husband was having an affair. Um, I just knew there's something that you know when you just you know and for quite a while I ignored it I just ignored that I you know this is what my intuition was telling me until one particular morning he was going to work and going to Leicester and I looked at him and I just thought he doesn't look like a man that's going to Leicester today <laughs> don't tell me why I knew that <laughs> he wasn't going to Leicester. And I said to him, where are you going in Leicester? And he said, oh, some hotel. I said, okay. So I took him to the station and I come back and I thought, he's not going to Leicester. You know, I just knew. So anyway, I rang up his office and I said, you know, where is, um, where's the seminar in Leicester today? What hotel is it? And they said, we don't have a seminar in Leicester today. I said, oh, okay. So I went and I rang him and I said, what hotel are you in in Leicester? You know, like, Trying, I don't know, I think I was trying to get him to be honest, but anyway. Um, there was no seminar in Leicester. So it became obvious to me that he wasn't in Leicester. So the next day when he came back from Leicester, um, I said to him, where were you? You know, where were you? And um, as what I think most people do when they're confronted with a big conflict in their life, where they don't know how it's going to impact them, I think it's quite common to lie. Would you, would you agree with me that, you know, if you're afraid of the impact of something, it's common to lie. And that's what he did, he lied. He said, yeah, yeah, I was in Leicester, I was in Leicester. And I do love a cell phone because right at that moment, his phone buzzed with a text message. And I grabbed it and I picked it up and I said, give me your password now. <laughs> I did swear quite a lot, but anyway. Anyway, so eventually I got the password from the phone and I read the text message. And it was one of those cliche messages where, oh, the bed's too big without you, and da 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 da, and last night was great. Um, so I threw the phone at him. And um, what happened next was um, my world fell apart. My world fell apart completely. Um, married with two children, um, <coughs> small children. And. Um, this was something that I never expect to happen to me. You know, it happens to other people, it doesn't happen to me. Um, especially because we seem to have had such an amazing relationship previously. Um, anyway, within 10 days he had left. And he left and I was, at the time, I was living in Kent, rural Kent. Does anyone live in rural Kent? In the room, anyone? Go on, admit it, go on. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? It's really beautiful. 
But I was living in a house, it was my parents' house, in the middle of a hundred acre wood. They actually do exist. And he left, and I had no money, I had no job, um, and my flat in London was being repossessed. And um, I don't know what happened, but two days later I just thought, I have got to run. I have to go running. And it was my intuition telling me, go and run. And I went out and I just ran in the woods and ran in the woods and screamed, <laughs> as you would when something like that happens to you. Um, and at that moment in time, I think that my intuition was calling me and saying to me, listen to me, I can help you. And, you know, obviously my world fell apart. But what do you do when you're a single mom living in the middle of a hundred acre wood in a house with two very small children at night time? Tell me, anyone idea? You go on Facebook. <laughs> Thank God for Facebook, that's all I can say. So I was spending my time on Facebook late at night. And I was on Facebook and one of my friends had posted they were going to a workshop on intuition. I thought, that sounds like just what I need to do. So I went to this workshop on intuition and I, it was the most amazing weekend for me, okay? And it was amazing because I had people in the audience, I volunteered and I had people in the audience intuitively read about me and what I was going through and actually just tell me stuff that I thought, how could they possibly know that? And then they, they did a reading on me in my completeness and, and who, who I really am. And the same thing happened. They, they just told me stuff that I thought, wow, that's amazing. And I thought, I have to go on this training. And I'm not, I'm not pushing the training, but anyway, um, I haven't got any sales for the training, but I mean. So anyway, what happened was, um, I decided I was gonna go on this training. And when I tuned in with the person that ran the training, they said what is so obvious, because intuition will tell you what is really obvious. It is so obvious you need to move out of that house in the middle of that woods because you are so isolated. You know, you need to, you need to make a change. And logic was saying to me, don't do it. You've just moved your children from South Africa to live over here. They've just established themselves in schools. How are you going to move into a house that's being repossessed? Like everything was saying, don't do it. But I knew that it was the truth. And that's the thing about intuition. It will tell you what is really, really true to you, to your heart. And the minute I decided to move out of my parents' home into this, to my flat in London that was being repossessed, it was like a whole new world opened up for me. And like someone offered me to design five websites for them and to pay me money, which I'm not even a website designer. <laughs> like, I know a little bit about websites. And they like said, we want you to do it. I was like, like weird things started happening. The, the mortgage company, I phoned them, I spoke to them and I managed to convince them to not repossess my flat until I sold it. Well, it's like give me a chance to sell it. Um, and I started the training, and, and then my brother-in-law offered me a job. Like, he, his office was up the road, and he said, look, someone's just left, and we need someone and in the telecommunications industry, interesting enough, another telephone. Um, and so it was like, suddenly, everything started to turn around. And I literally went from selling my flat to creating a, a home in queue. Um, I got my two children and my sister's child into a school in queue, uh, which there were no places. And it was really because I began to really listen to my heart and my intuition. And on that journey of doing that, um, one of the things that I, I've always wanted to do was to write. And I always thought, because I'm a coach and I've, I've done seminars and stuff like that, and I always thought, yeah, I want to write a book about coaching and, and relationships. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and um, I thought, yeah, you know, I want to write a book about this. And what became obvious, the more I tuned into my intuition, the more I listened to my heart, was I had this character inside my head called Felicity Foxtrot. And I was like, you know, I was like, who is this character? What is she? She's some mythical being, and what, what is she going about? And at the same time, when I was living in this in my flat, I put my, my bin outside, and it doesn't matter how often I would secure it, the foxes would come and raid this bin, and it really pissed me off. It was really annoying. And one particular morning, I'd gone out, and I'd sorted it all out, and I was walking up the road to work, and I was like, aha, that's what it is. Felicity Foxtrot is a character in a book, and it's all about a 
fox that has to raid bins for a living. And she raids these bins because she has to scavenge to survive in life. But actually, that's not who she really is. She really wants to be an artist. And I'm like, where is all this coming from? Like, where, where does it all come from? It comes from your imagination. And when you allow yourself and give yourself permission to make it up, it just unfolds. So then I made a doll about this fox, and I made the doll, and then I started to write this story. And before I knew it, I had written a children's story about how to, trans how to go for what you love in life and how to listen to your heart rather than listen to what you think you have to do in order to create what you love. And uh, last year, I published the book. It's only available digitally at the moment on Amazon. It's called Felicity Foxtrot Discovers Her Heart. And it really is a journey of my own heart on how it doesn't really matter what happens to you in life. It's how you choose to respond to it. And, you know, I've really come to realize that my intuition is the language of my heart. It's the language of my soul. And sometimes it will whisper just very quietly to me. And other times it will come and bang me really loudly on the head if I don't take action. And these days I like to not let it bang me on the head so loudly, but it still will do if you don't, you know, if you don't do that. So what I would really, and actually the other thing is to just to fill the whole story. What's amazing is like when my brother-in-law offered me this job, and you know I do see it, it's it's a job. It is in the telecommunications industry, and I'm like, do I want to work for you? Like, why would I want to work with my brother-in-law? And then he's a great guy, but I just didn't see myself working with him. And every time I tuned into it, which is like every time I centered myself, stepped into a space of what is, you know, what is the truth here, it said go work with him. And it's really amazing because that job has turned out to be like an amazing opportunity for me in terms of um, just what it's allowed me to create in my life for my children, from holidays to cars to all those material things, James, that you can have. Um, and now I'm actually going there and I'm, I'm bringing intuition and coaching into my working environment. So if I had listened to my logic and my reason, I wouldn't have taken that job. And it's just, it's, so it's amazing how, you know, if you're just true to yourself, even when logic doesn't, like logic will tell you not to do something, but if you listen to your heart and you follow it through and you take the action, it's amazing what you can create. So I would really love to encourage all of you to, to listen to your heart and to obviously buy Felicity Foxtrot Discovers Her Heart on Amazon later tonight for your children um, and for yourselves, because although it's a children's book, it's a really lovely book for adults to read too. And um, yeah, I just would say, if you want to talk to me about intuition, I'd love to you know, share with you how easy it is to access it. Thank you very much for your time.